again, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Game Pass Grab Bag here with the podcast for Game games for the Game Pass Collection, bringing you three unique perspectives of varying skill range. I am the nameless hero of this episode, Andrew. With me, the one who never knows what's going on, Keith. Hello. And the one who, whenever she asks me a question, I swear she's speaking another language, Liz. Hey, guys. This week was a listener request, so thank you so much, Bill, for recommending that we play Tunic by Andrew Solstice, who is... Just one person. Tunic is a top-down action-adventure game where you are playing a nameless fox who woke up on the beach, and it sets off on an adventure. Wait, and that's this is a it. one-man show? Yeah. Wow. Okay, I'm looking at it a little differently. <laughs> so, before we really get into this, this is going to be a warning. This episode is going to be heavy spoilers. So, normally we don't do a spoilers for the story. But if you've ever played Tunic, the gameplay itself is a spoiler. So unfortunately, it's going to be very difficult for us to avoid spoilers. So listen to our Gamer Pass section. But after that, fair warning, if you want to play Tunic, highly recommend you play it and don't get any spoilers and just try to figure things out. But the gameplay itself is just is is spoilers. You just you need to learn things on your own. So let's get into Gamer Pass. Liz, this is a Gamer Pass for you. I'm... In the middle. I feel like I've been in the middle a lot lately with games. I think it had moments where I thought it was a lot of fun and other moments where I was just stuck, <laughs> you know? Like, I feel like I usually played this at the end of the day and I just didn't want to do that much thinking. I feel like it's <laughs> a lot of figuring things out and um, I, I'm, I guess I'm saying that I'm lazy <laughs> <laughs> or I was lazy this week. So I don't know if I would necessarily recommend it to somebody but i think it's a good game so and because i'm in the middle i'm, I'm gonna give it a game okay i think that's right i think that's reasonable i think that's reasonable i mean because you are entitled to your opinion so obviously it's reasonable <laughs> i guess there's that i'm uh, waiting for a but <laughs> no, no there's no but i this is just a definite game for me i i really loved everything about it and it's i don't know it's not weird it's just it's it's unique. The, there's so much about Tunic that's so unique, and but it feels very similar. Like yeah. I feel like I heard it compared to Zelda games, and I can see a lot of that. And I mean, you're wearing a little green tunic, and you have a sword. You you kind of and look a shield. Like, uh, the shield's very well, yeah. You, Zelda you kind of look like Link, so it like it makes sense that it could be compared to a Zelda game. But it's so so much different, and it's it's its own thing, and it's. Just so much fun. So definitely a game, yeah. Yeah, I'm with you, Keith. This is 100% a definite game. I loved Tunic so much. (laughs) This game brought me so much joy. So I agree with you, Keith. Yeah, when I first saw this game, like this game has been like teased for quite a while, but you know, it's made by one person, so it took a very long time for this game to come out. But I thought the same thing where I'm like, oh, this is just a very Zelda kind of esque knockoff. You know, it's just top down action adventure, you're going through dungeons, fighting monsters. The combat looked very similar. But the more I played it, the more I was like, this game is amazing. I just loved so much about it. The The big mechanic with Tunic is that you're finding pages of a manual and they're super like encrypted. Like they're super encrypted because you're constantly getting a language that you never learn. So you're constantly reading these pages that are in a different language and you don't learn that language at all. So you just got to figure it out by piecing things together. And it just, it filled me with so much joy, like trying to figure things out. Yeah, you can look up a walkthrough, but it just, I highly recommend you don't. Try to actually take your time with this game. And it's so rewarding. It's slightly on the difficult side, but one thing that I love about Tunic, especially too, since Elden Ring's the hotness going on right now, this game takes a lot of kind of elements from Dark Souls of, you know, if you die, you leave your corpse and you actually leave some of the currency or progression there. And you have to go retrieve it, but it's not nearly as punishing as Dark Souls. And then, you know, a lot of people keep saying like Dark Souls doesn't have an easy mode. You just need to get good. But Tunic, you know, threw that out the window and they have a no fail mode, which Liz, you used. And so I think it's nice that this game's accessible. I also played it regular too. Uh, Yeah. But it was just nice that this game has an accessibility thing to it. So if there's a boss you really are stuck with and you really want to continue the game, you can turn it on, kill the boss, turn it off if you want. Yeah, and you said you still get achievements. Yeah, still get achievements. So I know this is kind of a long intro here, but yeah, absolutely. Tunic is so good. Definite game. So that's uh, If you're tuning out now, 
we'll see you when you come back or yeah or maybe not see you i don't know i don't see anybody so as we're getting into the story and gameplay yeah as i said <laughs> there's a lot of there's gonna be spoilers so if you're interested play the game and then come listen to us again so we're just talking pure freely on this then yep all right so can you into believe the story. he kills that little girl then <laughs> Could you believe it was a dream the entire time? It's it was purgatory. <laughs> <laughs> so getting into the story, as I said, so you are waking up on a beach as this fox who is nameless. You are not given any instructions. You are not really seeing any images. You are just climbing stairs and continuing your venture. And you're finding these manuals that are strewed about the island that are essentially a game manual. Anyone who's grew up with video games in the... 80s, 90s, and some a little early 2000s, games used to come with a manual. And this is essentially what it is. It's supposed to be like one of those manuals that you doodle in and write notes and stuff. I absolutely love the manual aspect of this game, but what did you guys think of the story? The story is very confusing and kind of open for interpretation, but I like the mystery of it. So I honestly didn't really understand what was going on. I don't know that I ever figured it out. What, what do you, I would, I would love to hear, what is your interpretation of the story? So I, I kind of took it as, I, like there was a war of some sort that happened. And I, I, again, they're the foxes versus not foxes. Um, and then ultimately there was like a hero who got trapped in that soul stone thing and you were trying to release them. Kind of, I think. <laughs> I mean, okay. I got confused too because when you can buy stuff, there's this like skeleton cat that looks really cute. And then later on, there's this like tower that you're in and it looked like there are a bunch of cats being trapped. And you're like, that's not the same thing. And I was like, I, I don't understand. <laughs> that's where I kind of gave up on, on understanding the game. it was like a fox game. skeleton. Maybe that that I could be wrong with that. And also, why did they choose a cute fox for this? Huh. Which I think it's funny. So Andrew and I's daughter has trouble saying fox. <laughs> so every time the little icon came up on the Xbox, she said a different F word. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I, I just we're like, yeah, fox. Uh-huh. <laughs> Trying to emphasize. <laughs> but I just wonder why it's uh, a cute little fox. When you have all of these, like, grotesque... Well, the developer actually said he picked a fox because he figured it was the easiest for people to recognize what's your character's facing forward and what's facing backwards. Since the fox head is kind of an arrow pointing forward, and he has a big bushy tail, that you it'd be easier for the players to figure out what's forward and what's backwards. That's, that's really smart. Yeah, as I said, that's brilliant. I didn't even, like, <laughs> think about that. But, yeah, it's that's pretty brilliant. But, uh, so my interpretation of the story is so yes there was the fox people that used to live on this island but they learned and discovered the secret of immortality but the issue with immortality is as you get older your body starts to break down and so that's why those people are those kind of ghost looking monsters miasma things yeah the miasma looking foxes and your character your characters get reborn some get lost in, in purgatory and essentially, it is a purgatory cycle in this game. A hero comes along, does all the things, rings all the bells, opens the, frees the air, but then the air turns on you and kills you. But your character kind of slightly, well, not breaks the cycle, but continues the cycle by coming back, killing the air, and taking the air's place. So it is a never ending cycle of heroes constantly coming in, killing whoever's trapped just to become trapped themselves. That is the never ending cycle. Why, why do it though? It is an alternate ending. Yeah, I didn't of, get the alternate ending. So the alternate ending is finding all the manual pages and you are, your character learns the entire knowledge of the world and you actually present it to the air and you show the air, Hey, we're constantly doing this in an end, endless cycle. We need to break the cycle and you stop. Okay. And you guys right off See, hold hands. Sense. Yeah, essentially hold hands and live on the island together. Huh. It's, it was that there, simple all along. Yeah. I went there way too early 
because I actually like looked it up because I was like, what am I supposed to do in this snowy mountain? And then I felt like every area that I went to, like it was like I, w- I wasn't supposed to be there yet. So I feel like my biggest hang up with this game is that I wish it was more linear. Like even the manual pages, I was getting them so out of order because I felt like I was going to the wrong places first. Or like I wouldn't find something that I needed to really progress and then I'd have to go back and Google it. Like, oh, how do I get this? So for me, I just, I think that I just wish that the manuals and the gameplay were both more linear. I I like that it wasn't. I was going to say the same thing. I, I, this is a, one of the few RPG type of games that's actually truly open world. Like a lot of them, you can go to different places, but you can go back to them. You can revisit them, but you still have kind of a linear progression of where you can go. There's really very few limitations on where you can go in this game at any given point. And something that I didn't really realize until maybe about six hours in, and Andrew pointed out to me, the coolest thing about this game is the second you wake up on this island, you have every ability and you, well, you don't have every item, but you have every skill available to you, and, but you don't know how to use them. And it never clearly tells you. So unless you figure it out, you could go the whole entire game without doing things. <laughs> yeah. Which if you're going to learn like all the world secrets or whatever you were saying earlier, why can't we just figure out translations as we go along? Like I definitely, and as for like there when it comes to like the open world part, like I remember accidentally going to the graveyard area way too early and that guy with the gun was shooting me and I was like, holy crap, I'm not supposed to be here yet. And when you die, obviously, you know, you have to collect your stuff and I didn't want to go back there. So <laughs> I, I do feel like it didn't really make, I, this game just didn't make sense to me half the time, to be honest. So this is, I totally understand where you're coming from, Liz. I think the main reason why me and Keith love that it's an open world game is because this goes back to you saying how you're not a gamer. Everything about this game made me feel so good when I figured it out. The ma- like, Because this all boils down to the manual pages. When you're looking at these manual pages, you have no idea what's going on, but you're just looking at them and you're like, the first couple you get, you're like, oh yeah, very basic, you know, A's roll, left trigger, lock on, like whatever. But even then, like those basic pages have some hidden information that you really got to look at. But for me, it felt so rewarding when I was like, wait, I think I need to go to this area. Then I'm like, well, where is this area? How do I figure it out? And I'm scouring my maps and trying to figure out, oh, I haven't gone this path. Is it possible to go this path? Do I do this? Do I that? And when I found out where I needed to go, it was just, it was the coolest feeling. It felt like I truly was like literally just like solving a puzzle. And it was just a ton of fun. So I understand where you're coming from because you say you don't get that feeling. When you fight a hard boss and you finally beat it, you're just like, ugh, finally, wasting my time. But like for someone like me and Keith, it's like, yes, I can't believe I did that. I want to go. I want to keep going. Yeah, I also I don't remember if the all the maps were near each other, but like I also was like getting frustrated too. Where a lot of times I would go to an area and I wouldn't have the map yet, and I also like the hook thing. You need to get a hook to go to some places, and it's just like, okay, well, where do I get that? Like I just, yeah, this just the whole concept wasn't for me yeah which i was i was uh, like i was kind of surprised well not surprised but like i I, for the longest time kept telling you about this game like oh i think you'd love this game you're an adorable fox and it's like i thought it was more gonna be like zelda than it was gonna be like a difficult kind of difficult-esque dark souls type of game but it's weird too though because i felt like the combat was so simple that it's like it really wasn't that complex in that aspect where I actually it was like kind of wishing for more with the combat. So like you start off with a weak weapon and you get a sword and then, yeah, you get bombs and you get like a little wand thing. But I mean, the way that the enemies fight, like the basic enemies, I mean, it's just kind of felt like all the same. I mean, there are the spiders that would like flee and stuff, but I just I don't know. Just the fighting just felt very samey throughout. So I that is one aspect I, I largely agree with as far as in large parts, there's nothing special about the combat. It's fairly simple, but it's also, to Andrew's point, at least the boss fight, it has a certain Souls-like feel of each boss fight is very much a dance of, you know, dodge roll attack dodge roll like you you kind of find these systems of how you need to whittle these bosses down and and it presents itself a fun challenge 
but the the combat wasn't what I liked most about this game. It was the discovery. Yeah. And and I do here. agree with you, Andrew, that yes, it's definitely a part of it is like that gratifying feeling of like, oh man, I, I'm so glad I figured that out. But it, I think still the it's that sense of discovery. And it's something that I don't I don't know the last time I felt that in a game. Same where, here. Where it's it just was the like coolest feeling. Every like I I've I've ingrained into my video game muscle memory at this point. Check every alleyway, always turn backwards when you start a level. You know, you kind of you learn these things, the language of video games, and a lot of that happens in Tunic. But there's so many tiny little nooks and crevices and little places that you walk by it a thousand times and all of a sudden you walk out from around a corner or from another room and you walk out around that corner that you've walked by a thousand times. You go, wait, I didn't know I could do that. And you could have done it from the very first second you started the game. Because again, almost every part of this game is open. You just don't realize it. And it's it's such a weird feeling. You feel it so is. lost. <laughs> but you don't it feels like I, I don't know how to explain it like any other game it's so fun i know because a lot of times you, you think of like a metroidvania type of game where you know you see a wall that needs a bomb to be blown up and then oh i finally unlocked the bombs now i need to go back to the areas i've been to find these walls that i can use a bomb with it's not like that as you keep saying like it, you have the skills already you just don't know how to use them and then when you're just like, dang it, I could have been doing this the whole time. Well, I got to go back and find these things. It was just so cool to kind of go back to these areas and revisit. Yeah, the hook I mean, is about the only one that like you... In the ha- dash. Yeah, the hook and the dash. And th- those are about it. But otherwise, it's like, ah, dang. Like, you just feel so stupid. I feel like Andrew thought I would do worse at the game, too. Where it's like, I did ask a lot of questions. But I felt like I was hearing Andrew say a lot, like, I can't believe you found that. So I feel like I was actually really good at finding like the little nooks and crannies. You were. But I just didn't get excited by it. It's funny. You you were good and a lot, sometimes you're also very bad. Like there was a I couple times you're like, there's the stairs. Stuff. How do I get the stairs? I'm like, babe, where do the stairs lead? And then you're like, oh, it's around this corner. I, I get it. Yeah. When I, I needed to get someplace, like I knew where I was going, massive brain farts. It just like I didn't know like which way was north and south. Like it was really bad. But when it came to finding treasure... Like, I was really good, I feel like. Yeah. Well, yes and no. You never found any of the uh, super secret 13 treasure that you get an achievement for. It's because you didn't get the, you never figured out how to do one of the mechanics in the game. Which mechanic? There's a mechanic. Or I is guess, it a spoiler? I guess we should spoil it or. No, you well, don't. You can tell me later. I was going to say, I don't know. I mean, I thought we were talking pure spoilers at this point or I don't I know. I guess. Yeah. So the one thing that I also like, I keep bringing up is how awesome the manuals are. And eventually you learn this thing called the golden path. And that's how you get the alternate ending of finding all the manual pages because this, like it just blew my mind how creative this was when you get the page of the golden path and it literally has, it's a grid with all these numbers. And then I was like, wait, I have to go back to every page and find this golden line. And you're creating a puzzle. I literally, I have the drawing still by me. And like, I just was like, I had so much fun mapping this grid out, trying to find these paths, draw it out. But what you do, you have your D-pad is your input code for, like, secrets. So you may have noticed throughout the world, well, you may have not actually noticed, but it's <laughs> constantly in the background of very sharp angles. Like, you'll see a carpet with just, like, sharp lefts and rights and turns and stuff like that, and that's actually a code just right there in the carpet. So it's telling you, you got to follow the path of the turns that the carpet's doing. So you press up on the D-pad, left on the D-pad, left on the D-pad, right on the D-pad, down on the D-pad, and you enter this code, and you usually will get like a secret treasure or something like that. Yeah. It is the coolest mechanic. And another one too, Liz, the, the ones you probably would have been more likely to notice were the ones with the golden doors. Like where you saw those gold doors, that would be an area you would go up and you would do one of those little input codes, and it would open those doors for you. Yeah, it was such a crazy eureka moment seeing that manual page and being like, oh my gosh, because I kept seeing these golden doors and I'm like, how do I open these stupid things? And then it's like, there it is. I could have been doing it the entire time. Well, and that and then like you said with the carpets, I I even once I knew how to do that mechanic, I walked by probably, well, I say 100 of those carpets. I probably walked by, you know, one of those things 10, 15 times until I finally had a reason or I finally figured out how to do the secret finder. And then when I did that and I got and I got to one of those places, I went thing for a while, but not realize you, you even know how to use it properly. 
the prayer aspect. I learned how to do the prayer pretty early because I got the page that showed me how to do it. I spent probably another two and a half hours playing the game, not knowing that's how you fast travel in the game too. Yeah, I, I gave Liz but, that spoiler. Uh, yeah, you you kind of led me to it a little bit, but I also like. I, I think there was a spot I got to where I activated one, and that's when it clicked with me. But you did help me get down in, uh, an area too where I had to use the prayer. But it's it's again, it's just like, I guess at this point, if you are listening and you either don't care about spoilers or you've played, maybe it doesn't matter. But like the tip you gave me was, once you learn a mechanic, just try it yeah. everywhere because uh, there's a good chance it'll probably work when in somewhere doubt, just through. pray no. i feel like you told <laughs> yeah. me about it because you're sick of hearing me say i really wish there was a fast travel <laughs> especially like when i turned on the no fail mode it was because i was so sick of having to go back to a certain point when i when i died because i i died a lot and there were some of the bosses that i was just like i am so glad i have no fail mode so liz i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna come clean and I wasn't trying to hide this. I use no fail mode as well. I did use it for for the air because I think I might have fought it like twenty times easily. I'm assuming, and there was a good the air good chunk of fights, like the final boss fight of the air, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, so you did beat the game. Yeah. Yes, and I mean there was a, there was a good chunk of them where my strategy was like get low health and use the uh, the special ability that gave me bonus damage for low health, but. Nonetheless, I think after like 20 plus times, I finally just said, I, I, I want to beat this. I've put in my best effort and you know, I had gotten even the, the second stage of the boss down half health a couple of times. So I, I, I didn't feel any any shame in doing no fail mode. And then I went back because it because ultimately, as I mentioned earlier, I wanted to get into the more fun stuff. I wanted to just go do the exploring of the map. I wanted to do the golden path. I wanted to do like I had seen your screenshot of the your grid that you built. I was like, I want to get to that. I want to do that. And I sat on pause with my game for an hour last night, just <laughs> going through page by page. So you were drawing it out, studying. Yeah, so cool. Studying the pages. It sounds like there's such work. that are. <laughs> it, it, it is, and you're and and there's no there's no way to spin it to say no, it's not. You you're gra- you're grabbing a pen and paper and you're writing this down. You're trying to figure this out, but some of them are hidden really well on the page. There was two I couldn't figure out. Um, page forty six and I think thirty two. I think I got forty six. I think it's it's I the one I've... where you need to it, it. The page is about the save, in which I stumbled on it by accident. I ended up looking it up. Like what the solution oh, was. I have, and I actually I have a solution for forty six, but I don't know if it's right. Oh, then it might not be. It's the one with the save, and it's funny because I actually by accident stumbled upon it after. Did you? I don't know if you ever figured it out, or did you do a walkthrough? The one I think I couldn't find. No, I still didn't get it. There was three pages, so when I beat the area, it tells it told me I was missing three pages, so I wanted to go back and do that. Um, and I still haven't found the pages, but I think I never went to the. I don't know if it's the graveyard. I think there's an area I actually just somehow never went to, quite honestly. Well, you must have gone to the you graveyard. Get a gun? You had to go to the graveyard. Do you get Do you get a gun? Yes. Is an item? That's, that's in the Because I never got the gun. Liz almost missed yeah, the gun, too. I made her go back, and I'm like, the gun's right there. Yeah, I never got yeah. it. Um, so I don't think I fully explored the quarry. I think that's that might be part of Did you of ever get I'm the missing, hourglass? But... No. Oh, yeah, I have the hourglass. Oh, see, I got the hourglass when I was done and just like collecting things. I stumbled upon it. The hourglass was the first item I got, actually. Wow. I got it fairly early, um, too. Yeah. That, that was one of the things I was surprised you found. Well, and and so I did mention this to you, Andrew, but, you know, I think the podcast needs to know that I pulled a really, really classic Keith with Tunic. So, as we've discussed, much of this game can be done, I don't know, however you want to do it. Well, I knew a sword existed. I didn't find it early on, and I said, I don't know, I'll just keep carrying on. And then I got the first bell tower, and I got about halfway through to the second bell tower. And I was like, you know, I really, I should have the sword by now. So I went back, and I started doing some more digging, and I missed it on the very first area you go to. Um, so I played like three to four hours of this game With without stick. the sword. Just a stick. <laughs> just a stick. I knew it wasn't right. I knew everything was way too strong for me, but I just... I ran past a lot of things. I, I don't know. I, I got, I got by. See, that's so impressive so, because, like, when you get to the uh, the forest, you're fighting the guards, and right away, as soon as I fought the first guard, I'm like, these guys are way too tough. 
I have to have the sword. I was like, I'm clearly supposed to get the sword before I fight these guys. Because not only that, there's a lot of bushes, and the stick can't cut the bushes down. But you were using dynamite. I didn't think about using dynamite for the bushes because that's a also they'll cut. I thought they'll also cut the grass for you too. Uh, so I was using them to cut grass for me when available. Holy crap, I how much it dynamite out. did you buy? <laughs> Early on, it was actually really good for combat. Towards the later b- fights, it doesn't really do much damage, but it was good early on. I mean, that's impressive that you got that far with just a stick. And not only that, you also told me, didn't you only have three health potions by the time you got all three of the pieces? Mm-hmm. Yep. That's also very impressive. Liz was at the first piece, and she had at least, I think, four or five health potions. Yep. I, didn't like, buy, <laughs> I wasn't like, buying geez. them from the shop and because uh, I was too busy buying dynamite. <laughs> <laughs> So I wasn't buying health potions at the shop or anything. Um, I was finding the little heart pieces that I, I found along the way. And I mean, uh, I didn't realize yeah. that it permanently upgraded your health. So I almost didn't buy it. It doesn't permanently upgrade your health. It's um, It like permanently has like how many health potions you can carry. Yeah, no, no, that's what I mean. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, I didn't realize that. So I almost didn't buy one because I was full health. Well, well you that... also play no fail mode, so I guess it didn't really matter. You keep saying that I did play I know, quite sorry. a few hours regular where is, I did need that. I actually like dodged and stuff during combat. When yeah, I that's one thing I thought was <laughs> impressive. Even though Liz was playing no fail mode, she still played. Like she still nice. did her shield. She still rolled. She still would like try to dodge things. And I'm like, man, okay. Like you're not just someone who's just like, I'm just going to bash, you know, the attack button and I win. I will I say with the bosses, I felt like I had to. They were pretty tough. I mean, not that I would I would give you any disrespect for using it anyways, because, I mean, I used it, for one, but also just, it's there, use it. Yeah, but I, I give you I, no but, disrespect either. But, but, at this, but I give you extra respect for actually, like you said, for, for still like trying to play the game for what it is. I mean, yeah, I have no disrespect for you either, because I'm glad you got to experience this game, because you were ready to quit. You weren't liking I the game? I liked it way more when I turned on no fail mode. Yeah. It was a game changer for me. I actually... It was for me. It was just going back to the the last place that I. What is it, what is it called? The I don't know. The quarry. Where you restart? Where the, the cat with the fire? What is it called? Oh, the the checkpoints. The little altars. Yeah. Oh. I just didn't want to have to respawn at an altar. Again, so I, that think, was I think I think it's a fox. Like. Cause, cause all the all the creatures are foxes <laughs> in this game. I half of them look like cats to me. I, I don't love know. That everything is a fox in this game, so it's like I don't know the cat, the cats <laughs> that didn't exist jaguar. anywhere in this game. <laughs> you know the monkeys, all the monkeys that were in the game everywhere. <laughs> I did feel like the enemies were kind of weird. Like all of a sudden there were spiders, and I was like, this just feels very out of place. Spiders. I, I feel like you said that's the thing that feels out of place. The thing to me is like eventually you start fighting like robots and and like spooky miasma monsters but i mean like the the jellyfish type things they explode but the spiders are just they, they acted like spiders they would get scared and that's where i saw one of them go under the uh waterfall and i was like oh, i bet there's something in there <laughs> oh check and there every was. waterfall was- yeah let's actually learn that gaming 101 check behind every waterfall mm-hmm. waterfalls are, are game developers favorite hiding places <laughs> So how many how much walkthroughs did you guys look up? I looked up one thing so far, um, and I and I don't really plan on looking anything else up. The only thing I well two things actually I would I would say I I did look up what each of the cards did because it gives you some pretty pretty good hints out to what they do, but I wanted to get in more exact detail, so I looked up what the cards did. That yeah, you I did pick too. up for the abilities. Um, and the only other thing is, is I could not find the last grave and it was one of those just really like, like you said, Liz, like brain fart type of moments. It was <laughs> cause I had to go into the quarry through the back entrance. You mean the hero graves? Yeah. The hero graves. Okay. Sorry. It, so I was stuck as the ghost and I could not find the last hero grave for the quarry. And I, the, the first time I found the quarry and for the longest time, the only way I knew how to get to the quarry was that back entrance. Yeah, but me too. I, forgot and i i was like i just don't know where to go i'm like wandering around could not figure it out and so i finally just i was like i'm googling this because i i just want to get my body back i want to i want to at least beat the game and that was the other reason too that i i ultimately i think put on no fail mode not that i probably wouldn't have ultimately but where i was kind of on my last day before we recorded i was like i just want to at least get through this much of the game and and so i did it but i 
I don't know. Again, I I think I love I love the way the games are doing this now. Is they don't shame you for it. It's not, and I don't even mind that to have an achievement that's like here's a special thing for doing it without that mode. But I think that largely having the ability to do even just ninety five percent of like the achievements in the in the in game stuff with the accessibility options is just so awesome. I only looked up two things. I looked up the shield because I couldn't find that, and I definitely gone by it a while ago. And then the other thing was the uh, the door, the the good ending, because I didn't realize it wasn't supposed to be there yet. And I was like, how do I open this thing? <laughs> and then I looked at this guy who was like, oh, I made this. Well, you, you're drawing. Yeah, the golden he was path. Like, yeah, you have to do this. And I was just like, I am not ready for that. No, thank you. I wasn't even sure if I could do it or not. I think that I should have done like a speed walkthrough before playing this game. I think I would have enjoyed it more. Because you told me that there's like 25 minute like speed runs. Yeah, I highly recommend. IGN did a uh, developer reacts to speed run with Tunic. So it has the developer, Angie Solstice, and one of the main guys of the publishers uh, reacting to a person who's doing a speed run of Tunic. And he does it with the game within 25 minutes. And it's really cool, but they just have really cool conversations explaining kind of some of the thought process of some of the things in the game. I highly recommend you check that out. Um, but well, as for. Like- built this game for speed running right in in a lot yeah. of ways because that because yeah, i actually he, read somewhere that there so there's a second sword in the game and yep I, I read that he intentionally put it in there for speed runners so that they could skip over the first one as you can right. imagine and then find that one later in the game because ultimately you you, you kind of just do need it or you're not going to do enough damage yeah because you can completely ignore the bells even though that's like a main mechanic you can beat the game without doing the bells and like you just gotta get like the three pieces and essentially beat the game, and that's it. So it's it's really cool. Yeah, he he put a lot of little things in here specifically for speedrunners. And so it's yeah, it's it's a really good watch. But uh, as far as me though, for looking things up, yeah, I'm with you, Keith. I looked up what the cards did because yeah, I was the same way where I had a good idea what they did, but I'm just like, ah, I just want to be sure. Especially you're when talking it comes to, like, about boss the fights. silver square yeah. discs, okay? There are perks that you get, but I looked that up. And in the end, I ended up looking up where the 13 treasures are. I was able to discover five of them on my own. But I think I have one. I have one treasure. I found like five souls, I think. Yeah, there's some that are crazy hard. Like one, there's a page that tells you, you know, when to hit up, left, down, or right on a wind chime. Like what note a wind chime is doing. And I am not that musically skilled to figure out what a note is and so it's just like there's no way so there was a reason possible. for that wind chime yeah i remember it's playing it to be puzzle. like it's kind of weird that there's a wind chime in this game yeah that's that, so cool is about that this the little golden cube in that in the hidden room no it's, like a, it's a wind it's the wind chime outside the house where you get the shield there's a oh. little wind chime and in one of the pages it shows a bird like singing, saying that these are the notes when you need to hit it. So yeah, I was like, there's no way I'm going to be able to figure this one out. And then there's another puzzle that I thought was, it's, this is what's so cool about this game. I saw the page and I'm like, what is this page saying? Like I saw the hint. You literally need to go to your audio, turn the master audio to zero, and then stand in the middle of the, like this puddle in the ocean for like five minutes, turn your audio back on, then enter like a quick five like key and then it activates the puzzle. Like, it's that's how you solve the puzzle. You have to specifically turn your volume off. Like, that's such a cool, weird mechanic. Okay, how did you know I, that? I will say, though, I, I was saying this earlier to you, Andrew. I think it's so dumb when games make you, like, just have your character sit for, like, five minutes or ten minutes or whatever it is. Five minutes is a long time. Like, do a minute. I think it is a minute. It's not, it's not too Oh, super okay. Because, yeah, that happened in a game that you were playing earlier, and you're just, like, standing there forever. It's just like I don't understand why games is, do that. Is that the one like on the bottom of the page? It's a, it has like the shush. Yes, and it says sixty seconds. Yep, that's uh, it. Okay, so, so it is a minute. How do you get five minutes out of that? I, don't, I, was, <laughs> dude, I was just exaggerating. But it's for so I Liz, and it's funny because like so I at least I'm glad to know I was sort of on the right track because I think it was like I tried going to the beach maybe. Yeah. There's like a little altar that you can like walk off the side of it and you just walk into the water and you can't go anywhere else but stand in the water. So I walked there and I just stood in the water for like a minute or two and nothing happened. And then 
I left, but I didn't try anything with my audio because I didn't think to do that. Yeah, it, the area looks like a kind of a question mark. Like it's a sandbar that's shaped kind of like a question mark. Interesting. Yeah. Jeez, how would you figure that out though? I I don't know. It's it's really tough. Like some of them are cool. Like when I actually would look up the solution, it's just like like then you look at the page and you're like, oh my gosh, like that makes sense because it is just filled with a bunch of little doodles. And a lot of it you just don't pay any mind to. It's just like, oh, I don't know. That's probably like a smudge or something like that. Nope. That is like a clue for something really important. Like I said, there was one page of the Golden Path that the page was showing about like save files. And I was just like, whatever. I don't know. I don't understand the purpose of this page. Like I don't see a Golden Path in it. What you had to do, I did it by accident. You go to like your style, your the file select screen and you wait like 10 to like 30 seconds or something like that. Not as long as a minute is. But then randomly, a new file appears. It's a gold file, and you have like a billion gold, and it, like it says your character is like max level and stuff like that. And you actually are in a secret area with a character, and it's literally a giant golden path seg- segment. And so that's how you solve that puzzle to figure out how to get the golden path like segment in that area. Super I, cool mechanic. I love hearing you guys talk about this game because you just sound so happy and passionate. It, it's just it was so clever. On the things, like the puzzles in this game, I loved it so much. Like he said, just like this discovery, the feeling of this discovery is like an amazing feeling. Yeah, because there's not a whole lot of moments that, and and I think this is why like it has them, but it's less about like that like satisfying moment where like, oh, I finally did that thing. There's not a ton of difficult points. There's just things that you just find. And yeah, and yeah it's it's just such a cool feeling. I didn't think there was too many difficult points either. Like the even final two boss with the bosses. Was... What did you guys think of the bosses? The f- the last two fights were the hardest fights, and I think that that makes sense. The second to last one, that the like f- well five altars that you actually have a fight. Um, you can fight them in any order. It's like a boss, and then four sets of minions. That one really gave me a a, a struggle, um, and I was real tempted to no fail mode that one but i finally i finally got through it and then the air was the one that it finally broke on but i it still it was weird because it was not so frustratingly hard that i was like oh i hate this it just was like no i'm gonna do it i'm gonna do it like i just kept wanting to try and that was the weird thing about it is i wanted to do it rather than getting angry at it yeah yeah i said earlier i i thought that the bosses were pretty difficult um there was at least one or two that i fought before no fail mode but the rest of them i was very happy that had no fail mode because i would have done bad (laughs) (laughs) so for me i mean i also like that they they did fight differently but i did feel like they were kind of like the same like you know one of them like would like do a certain attack certain amount of time so it was really easy to figure out what they were going to do um so i thought they were all right i i love the boss fights there's not a ton of them and I didn't find him too difficult. There was a, like the librarian, I think I had to try three or four times. That one was a difficult fight for me because I didn't have the flame wand. And the majority of that fight is a ranged fight. So I constantly had to try to keep grappling, grappling him closer to me to try to do damage to him. So that fight was just irritating for me. But it's because I just didn't have an item that would have helped it. But the air, I think it only took me four or five tries. It, I didn't find it too bad. Like what I loved about the bosses is they generally only have like three or four moves. So it was kind of easy to learn their mechanics, but they were just, I think a ton of fun. I love the designs of them I and think, they were just, they were very unique. I think the, the, the reason I struggled the most when it came to the air or some of the bigger fights is that yes, they had the same moves. So I knew what they were they were randomized and maybe this is the way it is with a lot of souls. Like, but I, I guess in my mind, I thought it was always kind of like a full on pattern. And so I didn't feel like I could fully predict what they were going to do as much as I wanted to. And, and actually this is probably my one gripe when it comes to the combat. And I don't know if it's just me personally, but I kind of felt as a, like the input was delayed in a sense, like not not actually delayed, but it was just one of those, like I would get myself into an attack loop and probably my own fault. Cause I would mash the button a couple too many times. So that <laughs> certainly some of my own fault, but a lot of like, sometimes games can be forgiving with that and you can get into like a dash or a block, like 
breaking out of those cycles, this doesn't. And I would yeah. like, I would over attack far too many times. And that was where I got into my, my worst issues when it came to the fights. Yeah. I, the, the combat isn't very tight, like a dark souls because no. yeah, you usually can dodge to cancel your attack, but not in this. So you got to be a lot more deliberate as to what you're doing. Same with, and you have to, same with the block, like you can usually yeah. block out of a, an attack and there's none of that. So it's, so that it's it's a little bit weak in that area but because at least in my opinion and I think pretty much by design too the combat is it's really not the primary focus of this game it can it can really get by and be carried by everything else that tunic has to offer yes i agree um but yeah like i thought the boss fights they weren't too difficult and i mean i love the design of them mostly and honestly i just the overall environments of tunic are actually stunning. See, for me, I think my favorite thing graphically was the manual. I love looking at it. I didn't yeah. understand a lick of it, but... I it, it looked really... like real paper, like a real manual, because like, you could zoom in, and it looked like it was like printed paper. And it was crisp. I mean, the other... the With the game, I feel like... I mean, there are a lot of bright colors in the game, but it also kind of had like a muted background sometimes. So I just really like the crispness of the pages. Yeah, I, I thought the designs were overall really cool. Like everything was distinct. Like some of the areas were large enough that it, I don't want to say it felt overwhelming, but like the like it was very grassy in the open area, and there's just a lot of it. It's a very big open space, but everything else is so unique and different that like it just you always kind of felt like you were in you were actually in some sort of different biome. So I loved that and. Well, not necessarily a graphics, but I mentioned it earlier. I love the map de design of this game. I love that it's not purely Metroidvania, that it's really just discovery. Again, mm -hmm. it, that's, the, that's the episode of the, or the word of the, the week apparently is discovery, but it's like, it's all there. And, and they do such un like clever things about hiding it and helping you find it. It's just, it's, I love it. It's, it's awesome. Yeah, I also, I like that you could pan out with a telescope and get like an overlay. But yeah, they did such a good job hiding those passageways because a lot of things I felt like it was very easy to figure out like what to do, where to go. And other times I felt like they deliberately made it tricky. And so I really just like the, the different aspects of like, you know, purposefully making things a little bit more shadowed and... um I mean, not that I like things more difficult, but it is like, <laughs> it's nice when you stumble upon something where you're just like, that, that should, like light looks a little iffy. I'm going to go over there. So for me, I really like that aspect. So one thing that makes me sad about the manual is you talked about Liz, how great it looks. I hate that it's digital. I miss when you get a brand new game and that new manual smell. Don't tell me the one, Keith. Don't, don't you miss it when you just get it and you can actually have those papers in your hand and you smell that new manual? That crisp, shiny paper that, it, that they made it out of. Ah, uh, it's such a it distinct like smell. thick magazine paper. I mean, it's great, but then you can't discover the pages. I know. So. It, would, it would take out literally uh, about 80% of this game if, if you just had the <laughs> manual in front of you. <laughs> no, but one thing that I thought was kind of cool about it, and I'm, I'm guessing both you guys noticed that i don't know is that you could kind of like move the manual around when you had it up and you could see like an old school like not like analog tv screen of your pause screen behind it did you no. notice that yeah i did i don't think yeah, it's, i did it's it's like a very like it's like a crt type of monitor it looks like behind it and it's where you paused the game is where it's zoomed out on so oh, it's a, oh yeah 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 no I did see that yeah, yeah so it's almost like while you're while you're in the game you're like in the game and then when you pause it for the the manual you're like it's almost like you're sitting on your couch playing this game on an old school TV you know like back when so you're in kid reality Nintendo. you are not playing the fox you are playing the child playing, playing the game of the fox how do you know it's a child or the person there you go I'm just saying like I, whatever you know what I mean. I'm I'm a full blown blown adult playing this game. Don't assume it's a child. I don't know it's a human. Game. It could be an another animal. I mean, it could be an alien. I bet you could teach a monkey. They have they have opposable thumbs. I for me, I love the camera angles of this game because a lot of it is just this top down view. But there's a couple moments where it pans out and it is stunning. Like when you're walking through the quarry the right way, the actual front entrance. Oh, I'm yeah. with you, Keith. I kept going through the back entrance and it is 
very difficult to do the quarry if you're going through the back entrance. But I couldn't figure out how to go to the front entrance well, for with the longest the, time. With the camera angles, there were some times where like the camera would shift if you were going around, like for instance, a tower. And whenever that would happen, like I would find myself trying to change the view of the camera. Even though like I, <laughs> all the rest of the game, you couldn't do that. I just like, then I wanted to be able to do that. So I kind of got irritated by it. Uh, see, I, I, I never did. I just loved any time the camera panned in different ways. Like there's another time where you're climbing a ladder at the library and it zooms out. And it's just gorgeous floating castle. Yeah. So cool. I, I do agree, Liz, in the aspect of like there was a lot of times that I like I instinctively tried moving the camera. I, I didn't mind that I couldn't because I, I think it does a very good job of showing you exactly what you need to see. And it's a funny thing about the gameplay, just kind of, and another thing about that is everything on the screen is deliberate. If like, if that makes sense, like I think of like Disney world as a comparison, you don't walk by, you know, a stone on the ground, just about when you're like waiting in line on the haunted mansion that isn't there for some sort of a reason. And tunic is that same way. And it's, and it's map design is just like, you see every angle the way you need to see it. Like the, the puzzle when you get the uh, secret area. Is it the secret area where the fairies live or whatever? Yeah. And you have to like move around and just slightly move the camera with these by moving in this tiny little room to see all of the angles that you need to see to hit it. And it's just, again, I, it's just neat. It's yeah, whenever you so hold the neat. lock on, it yeah. shifts the camera slightly up. Yeah, and just slightly, but just enough. And, like, it's a subtle thing that if you're not, like, just messing around, trying everything, you almost don't know to do it. It's yeah. just, I, I don't know. It I, makes I me smile like we, every time. I, don't, I feel like we've, like, gushed over this game so much. Like, we haven't done that, like, the longest time. It has been this a game, while. This game just brought me so much like joy. <laughs> I, I'm glad I brought you this much joy too, Keith, because I was afraid. I was like, this might be too frustrating for Keith because I can understand people who would not like this game. Like, if you are not observant, like, you are not going to have a good time. I like Liz. <laughs> oh, Liz. I you looked at you. me. I didn't you, see you your looked. name, Liz. <laughs> but yeah, you need to be observant. You need to look at these manuals and understand them. You need to really look at the maps because, yeah, there are paths that to the camera are hidden but if you look at the manual you can clearly see there's a path there so this game is just very much about being aware one thing that i wanted to bring up because i'm really curious you guys's viewpoint on it um there are some times where i like oh, i like the music but there are other times where like i was trying to figure something out or i was frustrated and the music just irritated the crap out of me like i felt like it was very up and down for me like i I don't, I don't know. I, I don't think it was, it wasn't my favorite, but I didn't hate it for like 90% of the game. But there was that like 10% where I was just like, I just, I want silence. I don't think it ever bothered me. I think I... But did you enjoy it? I kind of, I kind of phased it out. I think it, it felt like kind of some of that music where it's good, but it just, it fades into the background and, and it's very repeaty. Yeah, and I and I think again because of the way that like I had my focus so shifted in this game and like the way I was the type of focus I had while I was playing, like I just wasn't focused on the music and it doesn't take over at all. Some games just automatically crank the music way too loud and Tunic doesn't do that. And so I appreciate that aspect. I was trying to pay attention to it last night while I was playing and I it didn't I didn't find it bad, but Nothing that I was, like, wowed by, I guess. I'm in between like and love. Mm -hmm. I enjoyed it a lot, but I'm not at the level where I'm like, I would love to pull this on Spotify and keep listening to it on Spotify. There are some songs that I did enjoy. I think it does a fantastic job conveying the environments and the moods of what's going on in the game. Mm -hmm. But... Yes, like I said, it does repeat. It's a lot of the music is just it just is like a, a lot of repeating loops. So yes, it isn't something that's like this oh, grand scale kind of of music kind of thing like that. But it fits very well for the tone. I do remember, yeah, you're you're in the lower ziggurat when you restarted your game and you're like, nope, turning this down. And you <laughs> yeah. muted the music, <laughs> and I was just like, ah, oh, that's that sad. I was like, happen. I like this music. I thought it was good. I was also really surprised, so I was scrambling right before we started recording because I keep forgetting to look up our gamer scores, 
and I looked them up. Andrew, no surprise, 920, got 33 achievements. I was at 140. Keith, I was really confused by yours. Yours says it's, 320? Yeah, it's it's really low. It's because... It, but you beat the game, and didn't you put a ton of hours into it? I beat the game. I put a ton of hours, but I think, and Andrew, maybe you can confirm this, is it feels to me that it's one of those the last achievements that you get are very score heavy for one and that it's also it's like the completionist level type of thing like which that's what i haven't done like i've beaten the game so i've done the bare minimum where i haven't found all the pages i haven't done the gold the full golden path like those things are just gonna like kind of roll for me probably in the last couple hours of gameplay i would guess yeah the achievements overall in the game i think are really good i actually do recommend tunic for achievement hunters because the time to beat for the game, you're looking between 12 to 20 hours. Depending if you're just doing the main game, you're looking at 12 hours. But if you're looking to do everything, you're looking about 20 hours. I'm at like 17. So that can kind of give you an idea of where you're at. It is um, weird. I've rolled through so many, so through some of these parts of the game. Like I was talking to you for a while. I was just going through. I think I went through like the last, like two of the three keys, like nothing. And then I just got stuck for the longest time. For me, uh, what irritated me, I took me the longest time to figure out you can sprint in this game. Like It's one of the first manual pages you get. I thought it was just describing like, oh, if you want to dodge farther, hold A. So I was like, whatever, okay. I didn't understand that I was saying that's how you sprint. So I was walking majority of this game. I didn't figure out how to sprint till near the end. But yeah, majority of the achievements, well, first of all, 90% of the achievements are like 95% of them are secret achievements. But I think it's completely excusable for tunic because like i said this game is very like spoiler heavy so i think some of them are really cute too so like one was like a stick and like when you throw the coins into the wishing well nothing happened yeah like i like when games do cutesy achievements like that yeah they, they had really kind of a cute phrases like oh you hear a strange hum when you activate like the first like a uh, pillar but yeah, the achievements, a lot of the achievements are, yeah, collecting the secret treasures. There's, well, like I said, I think 13 or 12, and each one is worth, you know, I think like 20 gamer score or something like that. So, yeah, near the end, I was just looking at all of the different, like, secret treasures and stuff like that. The only three I don't have are actually gameplay specific. So, one of them is to have 10 of the piggy banks in your inventory, so you're not supposed to break them. Uh, another one is to find all the golden coins which I think I'm only like two away, but I was just like, eh, I don't know if I bother. It's only worth like 20 gamer score. And then the last one is to get the gun as your very first weapon. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So I've seen some walkthroughs on how to do that. I was tempted to do that, but I don't so know. So you're just skipping the stick then? I assume. I, yeah, I think, yeah, I think you're not even, no, you might be able to get the stick, but I th you're supposed to get, I think the gun before the sword, I think was what the achievement is. Huh. But Yeah. So overall, though, I recommend it for Achievement Hunters. They're, they're pretty easy achievements, especially near the end when you just look up a walkthrough. But I feel like that's enough gushing. Well, okay. I guess for a quick segment, though, since we talked so highly of this game, what are things you really wish this game could improve upon? Because I do have some things. I wish this game had more save points, like more altars, and I wish it had a better fast travel. I thought the fast travel was really lackluster. I 100% agree with you with the fast travel, especially because there were times where like I would get somewhere and I couldn't figure out how to get out. Um, and then same with once I turned on the, uh, you know, can die bit, I didn't have to worry about the uh, save points as much. But before I did that, that really frustrated me having to, to go all the way back. So I agree with both of those. Yeah, it's, I think it fits like the model and the design of what they want the gameplay to be in, in that that's kind of attempting to be souls like. So having those moments where you're like, Oh geez, I like, there's gotta be one close by. I've got no potions left. I'm running low on health. Like you have a little bit of those tense moments. And so I think it's designed that way, but it would be nice to have a few more, but it's not truly a gripe. I, I really think the big thing for me is what I was saying with the combat. And it's just like a small kind of quality of life. Like, I just wish the combat felt a little bit smoother. But I can forgive it because it's just not the, it's not the highlight of the game. Yeah. Like, you can, you can still get 20 hours worth of 
full gameplay out of this, I think, without or with no fail mode on. And that's another reason I think I like the no fail mode. I'm going to I'm going to talk about that more in my wrap up. I'll save that <laughs> thought. But another thing that makes me sad is that we're done with this game. <laughs> and I want more. I mean, I'm probably oh, going to go back and play more at some point because I, I do still want to go back and complete the full ending and, and kind of finish the road, if you will. But outside of that, yeah, I, I, I guess I hope they come out with another one or yeah. even a, an expansion of some sort. Could be kind of fun. I don't know. But I'd check it out. Yeah. All right. But let's get to our wrap up here. Keith, you want to go first? Sure. This is... Uh... This is one of those hard games because, it's, I mean, it's not. I loved it. it. I loved the gameplay. I loved all of the unique functionality and, and aspects to it. It just, I, I really do. It's We, we kind of ask this question, especially on these types of games, of like, what could I have changed? And Or you just did. Like, there's so little that I can think of. Like, boy, I wish it did this different or I wish it had that. And I just, I can't think of anything. I really can't. And it's... It's a it it's a feeling I haven't had in a game for a long time where I just it was just joy. It I yeah, I can't I can't say enough good things about Tunic. So I I highly recommend it. Um but yeah, as far as it goes, like I just I really can't think of anything about Tunic that I didn't like or would really change. I think just because I had Zelda on the brain, I decided to look up what year Ocarina of Time came out, and it's perfect. It came out in 98, so I think 98 is a perfect score for Tunic. <laughs> but did you legit do that? I did. <laughs> I legitimately did. I was like, I'm going to match it up with the year it came out. And then I went, oh, 98, that's perfect. So I agree with a lot you said, Keith. Like, this game really just brought, like, like the sense of joy and like of exploration and discovery that I really haven't felt in the longest time having that manual. It just reminded me of a kid. Like when I would rent games from blockbuster or West coast video and you know, there was a manual you could see what other kids wrote and like combinations to like skip levels. And like this game just like had that with like the digital manual. And it was just, it was really cool. The graphics of it are awesome. Like I said, the music was good, but nothing I would listen to on Spotify or nothing iconic. Like if I list, heard a song from Tunic right now playing, I probably wouldn't be able to like pick it out. But yeah, I, I agree with you. I wish the combat was slightly better. I wish it was a little bit the fast shovel was better, like I said, and I wish it was a little more like save points. But besides that, this game is just an absolute blast. Highly recommend it. Um, like I said, the only people I wouldn't recommend it to is if you just aren't really aware and you have a hard time kind of picking up hints. This you'll probably have a more difficult time. But for me, I'm going to give it 95. I think I'm going to give it a 75. Um, I was trying to factor in that I think it's a good game, but I just I also factored in my enjoyment of it, which wasn't much. And for me, I actually, I put in quite a few hours. I put in more than we're required, but the, one of the big reasons why I turned off the um, the no-fail mode, no, turned on the no-fail mode, is because I wanted to be able to progress further so that obviously I could talk about more with you guys, but it just did. I mean, it was, it made it so that I liked it more, but it didn't make it so that I liked the game. So, uh, looking at, I mean, that sounds mean, but I just, what I'm saying is I didn't enjoy my time that much. I kept getting really <laughs> frustrated. I didn't get it. Uh, looking at Metacritic, Series X, uh, 85 and 7.9. Xbox One, 85 and 7.1. Our fourth and silent co-host is back. Yeah. Um, guys, guess how many indie turds? Oh. He's back to the turds. Gosh, this is... How many times he I says would, turd? I would almost think this has evolved beyond a turd. I think this is a full-on like indie crap storm. I'm going to say four. He uses the word turd four times. Um... Five, just to give you a different answer. It was two. Oh. Two, two indie turds. So I win. Um, just a Dang couple it. things. I just did like little quotes of what he said. Um, elevator music. That was that was what? one. And then simply inept and downright pretentious. But I was actually like reading it and it sounded like he didn't know how to play. <laughs> like <laughs> when he was talking about the gameplay, he was like like digging chests and, uh, and I was just like... He was playing Sea of Thieves. Yeah, I was like, what are you, what are you talking about? 
But a lot of people compare this to Zelda. A lot of people who gave it a zero compare this to Zelda. It, and it's, it's very misleading. You, it looks like Zelda. But when you play yes. the gameplay, it is not quite and like Zelda. A lot of people called it overrated. So those were kind of like the highlights of the negative scores on... Because you know me, I like the negative ones. I, I will say, like, you need to put your time in this game. When I first started playing it, I also thought this game was a bit like Lost Oh, yeah, like, I was whatever. ready to give up. You're like, Liz, I was you like, this is. I was more. like, this is very basic. But, like, once I really started to discover the secrets, this game, like, took to me so quickly. But, yeah, I, I don't understand this guy. Like, does he, does he have people that are like, hey, man, I can't wait for your review of this game. Can you please, can you please play <laughs> this game? You know what? Because, like, it's going to be zero. Like, who's who's asking this guy to do reviews? But I love it, too, though, because every once in a while, he'll he'll give a, like a, a higher score, like a four. And a lot of times, it's a game that I'm just like, what are what are you talking about? I <laughs> so I do, I do just love hearing his comments and, yeah. Well, I think, Which, yeah. I think my favorite thing about it, too, is, is that... You know, we're, we're obviously, uh, you know, no IGN by any means, but <laughs> but I like to think that we have, you know, you, you kind people out there. You're, you're listening to us. You, you're, like you understand, you're interested to know what we have to think about a game. This guy's just yelling into a website. It's not, I know. there's no, about re- every game. <laughs> there's no reviews of his reviews. It's just, he's, he's throwing words on a screen for himself and only himself. And I think. But kind of like what you're saying, Andrew, that's that's what makes it just so fascinating. I don't... But hey, it gives us a segment, which I love. So thank you. Like it because that's the other thing is, is like, you know, if this was a YouTube channel, I'd be like, oh, it's a shtick. He's just, you know, he does. He does a he's thing the where angry he nerd. Yeah, yeah, he's the angry video game nerd. Like, OK, but he no, he's just this is for himself is to document how how much he hates video games and continues to play them. It's it's his diary. <laughs> it's his own personal <laughs> diary of rage. <laughs> oh my gosh. I love it though. I love what he writes. All right. So let's wrap it up here. So thank you so much, Bill, for recommending that we play Tunic because this was an absolute delight. So if you have any game recommendations, please email us at gamehousegraphic at gmail.com or on Facebook gpgp pod or twitter gpgp pod we have a lot of recommendations so thank you all so much who keep writing in give us recommendations we love taking the thought thought process out of uh, what game we're going to play but we do put polls on our twitter so please make sure you follow us cast your vote because we just have so many games we don't know what order to go in but i've been your hardcore gamer host andrew you can find me on xbox live at firebird 0152 i've been keith uh, I'll just double down on Andrew's thanks to to Bill out there because because yeah this was a this was a great pick I really liked uh, it and I think if I recall Bill was was one of the few people who you know was was willing to write in and, and tell the truth about this podcast that I'm really the the greatest piece of it so so thanks Bill appreciate that too <laughs> uh, Keith uh, did you already forget your new segment you were gonna do I I I didn't I didn't I I was gonna save it partially because I didn't come fully prepared. I'm 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 prepared to also include the fact that I give proper names for things. So, like, I'll give an example. Ben Ben and Jerry's is not Ben and Jerry's ice cream in this household. We live by Benjamin and Geraldine's. That is that is the name that we have allotted to Ben and Gerald. No, I can't even say it right. Ben and Jerry are <laughs> Benjamin and Geraldine in our household. So it will be Keith's words and proper names. Now we know his uh, ice cream preference. Um, I'm Liz Noob, gamertag coming on Dean. I'm on Twitter at Liz Noob, Noob, A-Z-W. Why would your ice cream preference? Are you a hot Oh my gosh, hot topic. I was <laughs> saying to Andrew, so every once in a while, I'll like really like some ice cream. Like I love like coffee fudge and black raspberry and so many different flavors. But I would never turn down a popsicle, but there are times where I just don't want ice cream. So I think I might be more of a popsicle person. <laughs> it's just so weird. I've literally never heard of like anyone. I, like I've only heard of kids liking popsicles. I like I freeze don't pops. Know what it is? Freeze pops are the best. Uh, freeze pops are. I used to love freeze pops, but well, I think because they don't like really sit in your stomach. As someone like, I definitely have some type of lactose intolerant thing going on. But like, <laughs> believe me, I know. <laughs> <laughs> even without that, um, like a popsicle, like because it's like. A billion degrees where we live right now. It's just so refreshing. Mild exaggeration. On a summer. <laughs> you exaggerated earlier. I can exaggerate. 
um i'm not meant for the heat but yeah it's like a billion degrees and there's nothing better than like a popsicle you know <laughs> i get that i can i can get on board with that i'm largely i'm weird about ice cream too desserts in general i don't eat a ton of them but there was one summer where i think we ordered ben and jerry's or benjamin and geraldine's if you will uh <laughs> i think like once maybe twice a week for about two months straight it was it wasn't okay do you know what? With how many times you're saying Ben and Jerry's instead of the long version, I'm I'm thinking you're making it up. I'm not. I because I ha- you think it'd be second nature to say Benjamin and Geraldine. Like I feel like I'm saying it more than you are right now. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I encourage ratio. You to. I mean, <laughs> I do. I I mean, I admittedly, yes, I do. I do use their 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 given name, if you will. But but you know, the Andrew is a. Hardcore ice cream lover, by the way. I just want to throw that out there. But what's my favorite flavor, babe? Vanilla. Didn't you you love that sailor one that like at the at the place in Maine? You were getting that every time. I'm surprised you remember that, but no, I have a go to flavor. Rocky Road. Man, babe, this is almost as bad as not remember my birthday. Do you remember my birthday? <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> That well, sad. that's all the time we have. And what is that your was favorite? That's cookie dough. Game Pass grab bag. Oh, I mean, that's the one that you get all the time, but I didn't know it was like your favorite. I told you that it's always my go-to because no, but go-to go, is different than have favorite. Flavor. I thought you were asking for your favorite. Yeah, that's like your chicken fingers of ice cream. Like yeah, it doesn't mean it's it. your favorite meal, but like if you go to a restaurant and you're like, eh, they're cheap, they're delicious, why not? So he's just trying to make excuses. Anyway, let's wrap it up here. Thank you all so much for joining. We love you all. See you again next week. Bye, Bye. guys.